Every second, thousands of different particles pass through your body. Except for making occasional mutations in our genes, these particles convinced us that we can understand the universe by studying their origin and properties. Fascinated, we made machines that produce and collide particles, hoping to unravel their true nature. And here we are, after centuries of the humankind effort, witnessing the theory called the standard model. If we imagine the universe as a game, the standard model is a mathematical recipe for specifying who can play and how to play. The players, or our particles, are divided into two categories, matter particles, which come in three generations, and the force carriers. The rule is simple. The matter particles interact with each other by exchanging the force carriers. For example, the protons that we find inside every atom are made of two up quarks and one down quark, which are held together by exchanging gluons or carriers of the strong force. The matter particles which don't exchange gluons and don't experience strong force are called leptons. In fact, the standard model is so good that we are starting to dislike it. Every measurement we made was always in agreement with the standard model prediction, until recently. In 2014, the particle detector in Geneva, called LHCb, started studying the case of beauty quarks, noticing something unexpected. The collected data suggests that beauty quark decays to third-generation leptons more often than to leptons of the first two generations. Interestingly, the standard model predicts that the case of beauty quark into any generation of leptons should be equally frequent. If confirmed, this would be the clear signal of physics beyond the standard model. In my thesis, I try to understand what does LHCb tell us. Firstly, it points to existence of a new fundamental force, causing the interaction between quarks and leptons. And secondly, the new force carrier, called the leptoquark, should mainly talk to matter particles of the third generation. Even though we expect leptoquark to appear at very short, unexplored distances, we can still feel its influence in very precise measurements. This is similar to deducing the existence of water droplets, even though they cannot be seen far away from the shore. Most of my time is dedicated to this, trying to understand where to look and helping experimental physicists perform better searches for this new particle. Why do we have three generations of matter particles with such a pronounced mass hierarchy is a complete mystery. The fact that leptoquark should mainly talk to particles of third generation might explain why this generation is so massive and even help us understand the origin of masses. Until we know this, we cannot claim to understand why there are atoms, molecules, or life itself. Let's hope we are on the right track. Thank you.